Welcome to my Kitsu Color Tier 3 guide. In this guide, I will try to explain what the best and optimal group setup is. I will go through the run, explain basic strategy for how to beat every fight, and I will try to explain every mechanic in the instance. Kitsu Color is a six man instance, and there are three roles that are must have it's the tank, the healer, and the lore master. Lore Master is hugely important for interrupts and CC and debuffing. The tank is a must have. For Kitsukala, Guardian and Captain work the best for tanks. And in the healer spot, the Minstrel and a blue Cappy are by far the best options for this instance. When it comes to the remaining three spots, you will always want to have at least two DPS classes, pure DPS. And for the third spot, you can either go with Berg. Or a third DPS. Going with a Berg is the more safe approach and it's mainly the strategy I will explain in this video. So in my opinion the safest optimal way to do this is tank, healer, lore master, Berg and two DPS classes. Usually RK and hunter is the safe bet to go with here. But if your DPS is strong enough, it's possible to kill the last boss in less than 2 minutes. I've seen groups with Berg, Champ, Warden for last boss kill it really fast. But still, as I said in this video, I'll explain the safe way with a tank, a healer, lore master, Berg, RK, and Hunter. The instance starts off with boss 1, Gultava, the Maiden of the Gladden. I'm not gonna linger too much on this fight because it's pretty easy. You can just have your bird go redline here. And the strategy is pretty clear. You just nuke the boss, nuke her down until she faces. Mechanics in this fight is the blue eye. As you can see, the minstrel has the blue eye. It's the damage over time for 30 seconds, and once that expires, you drop a puddle on the ground. And if you stand in that puddle, you take damage over time, but you also get a damage buff. So if your heals are good enough, it's a good idea for DPS to stand in that puddle, at least one puddle, for the buff. Now the other mechanic is all these spirits that you see around here. You want to keep the boss separated from the spirits because they buff the boss. So the role of the Lord Master here will simply be to root and CC as much as you can on the spirits. And you can even just let the spirits go for your healer and the healer can just move when they reach him. Other than that, this fight is really straightforward. Just nuke the boss like we're doing here. Keep moving away from the lights with the boss. Keep the lights CC'd. And you just DPS the boss down until she reaches 7 million which she will face and the fight is over pretty straightforward shouldn't be hard the maiden will now walk with you you follow her help her along the way to the last boss she will open this path and there are some ads in here you need to kill you encounter the first ad which is called volatile darkling their mechanic is that after you kill one Darkling, everyone gets a bleed that takes for 9 seconds. And the first Darkling you kill gives you the tier 1 bleed. I will show you right now. You kill the Darkling, you get tier 1 bleed. The thing is, if you kill another Darkling before the bleed is gone, it'll tier up to tier 2. And if you kill another one before it's gone, it'll tier to tier 3 and hit really really hard. Tier 1 bleed should be easy enough for a healer to heal through. Tier 2 hits a bit harder, but still healable. Tier 3 is where you get into really big problems. So a good idea is to kill one Darkling at a time, wait for the bleed to disappear, then kill the next Darkling. Try to keep that under control. Now the next ad we encounter is a Draining Dark Maw. This guy will lock people down, which needs to be interrupted to free them. You can also do a heal channeling skill which needs to be interrupted or you will heal. Other than that, he's pretty harmless. Just tank it and kill it. But there are some moments where you need to interrupt this guy. After killing this ad, 
you are now ready to start the gauntlet. Keep in mind that if you die at some point during the fight, from here the start until the final boss, you will have to start right here again if you die. And this fight doesn't start until you move forward to the woman. So you can do anthems, buffs, and go in when you're ready. So now we arrive at phase one. So as you can see, we're entering this room. This is phase one. We enter this room, this is the entrance. And what you can see in front of here is a big pool of water. And there's land here and all the way on the left and in the back you can walk on. So before explaining anything, I need to explain that there's a challenge mode at the last boss. If you only kill the biting tentacles in the two phases before the last boss, you activate challenge mode which gives you a couple of extra mechanics at the last boss, a couple of more tentacles to deal with, but I will not go into the challenge mode in this video. The strategy here is going to be to kill this spewing tentacle that spawns out to 15 seconds in order to not get the challenge mode at the end. Before I go into any detail about the fight, I want to explain the mechanics of these different tentacles. You have the biting tentacle, spawns right away. This is the tentacle you kill to end the fight. The tank moves out of melee range. It'll put a poison bleed on every member in the fellowship that you can't pot, so make sure the tank is within range. This is what a biting tentacle looks like. The start of each phase, Biting Tentacle will spawn right away. The tank needs to keep aggro. Make sure it's on you and stay within melee range. Which means you have this kind of circle to move around in. The other tentacle is Spewing Tentacle. When it spawns it does an induction for about 5 seconds. Which needs to be interrupted. If you don't interrupt this, every member in the fellowship will get a disease, which you can pot, but it still does big damage when applied. So the best thing is to make sure you interrupt every spewing induction. But if you miss one, make sure to call it out and have a captain or a minstrel be ready to pot for your group. This is what a spewing tentacle looks like spawn in the water and they induct this needs to be interrupted if not you get the disease you need to pot but we got to interrupt and like every 25 seconds i'm gonna fast forward a bit now you can see you need another interrupt and these need to be interrupted during the fight full time the third tentacle is the grasping tentacle these can be perma -messed. If you want to lock them down, it makes the fight a lot easier. But you can also ignore them. So their mechanic is they're going to pull a random member of the fellowship towards them. Let's say you're the healer up here. Maybe at some point this grasping will pull you. So you get pulled towards it into the water. The water does damage over time, so it's not a good situation. But it's pretty easy to free yourself. Just use a stun or a fear on the grasping and it'll let go of you and you can move back into position. Just to show you the effect of a grasping tentacle, the grasping on the middle left is going to pull me now. As you can see, it pulls me into the water and it starts gripping, like the gripping animation. So what you do to free yourself is target this grasping, use any kind of stun or any kind of fear, and you'll be free. You can see I stun it, and I'm free to go. And it'll take a while before it pulls someone else. So you can either have every member stun themselves free, or you can perma -mess those and keep them locked down. As you can see on this drawing, I have marked out every tentacle when they spawn, what you need to do with them, and I will now explain an easy strategy for phase 1. You always want your tank right next to the biting tentacle. It should always be in melee range. If the tank moves out of melee range, the biting tentacle will put a poison bleed on everyone. So the tank movement should always be standing in front of the biting tentacle. And the tank will also help interrupt this spewing and this spewing when it spawns. 
So the tank movement should always be like this. If you want to interrupt this, you want to go in a circle or movement like this and then interrupt it. Same with this, you want to go like this and interrupt. But pretty much the tank's job in this fight is tank the biting. Make sure you have aggro of the biting, it does a bit of damage. Help interrupt the spewing that we're going to kill. Help interrupt this spewing when it spawns. And also help interrupt the grasping if it grabs someone, the one in the front. The healer's position can usually be here. The healer's job is simply to keep everyone alive and help interrupt stuff if possible. And right next to the healer you can have DPS 1 and DPS 2. Their job, simply put, the arcane hunter, their job is to kill this biting and also kill this spewing when it spawns. We're going to start off DPSing the biting and then after 15 seconds, you're going to switch to the spewing, kill the spewing, and then switch back to the biting, and kill the biting, and phase 1 will be done. The lore master's job in this fight, pretty straightforward. You want to debuff the biting, debuff the spewing, so we kill it faster. And also, you have some CC and interrupt job to do. When the first grasping spawns, the LM can use your blinding flesh. CC this guy, but after that you should just ignore it and interrupt if you grasp anyone. The other job for the LM is to use Blinding Flash, interrupt this spewing, it spawns at 0 45. The LM just simply interrupts it with Blinding Flash, then goes back to debuffing the target that's being killed. And just keep an eye on this guy every 25 seconds. The spewing will do an induction, and the lore master has to interrupt. The lore master job is pretty easy. Interrupt spewing, debuff. Interrupt spewing, debuff. For the burglar, for this strat I have the burg in the yellow line. For the first minute of the fight, the burg is going to act as a DPS. Help DPS the spewing, help DPS the biting. But when you reach one minute, the burg is going to go all the way around to this side. At 1 minute 15, the Berg is going to be in charge of interrupting this spewing. Every time it inducts, interrupt that spewing. And when this grasping spawn, the Berg is going to riddle to keep it locked down. And from this position right here, the Berg can use double enrage on the biting from across the map. Keeping this guy locked down makes the fight a lot smoother. None of the DPS or healers will get pulled all the way back here. The only times you might get pulled is to this grasping, or this grasping in front, but it spawns late in the fight. This should make the fight really smooth, and if your DPS is good enough, the fight should be done in 3-4 to four minutes, and you can move on. There are of course multiple ways to do this, you can just ignore the graspings, have the lore master interrupt this one from range over here. You can have the ring keeper keep this one in check. And the Berg could just be a red line, and you can nuke a bit faster. I like the other way, because it's a lot smoother and easier. So once phase 1 is done, the Grasping Maw will go under the water, and you can move on through the exit to the next part. Once you finish phase 1, you go through the exit, you enter this little room. In this room, you fight a bunch of ads, the ads that I showed you, Darklings and Dark Maws. Pretty straightforward, just watch your bleed so don't, they don't tear up too much. Once you kill all these adds, you'll be able to move further into the instance. And as you can see here, we kill all the adds. The water sinks. You can now move down. Also at this part, it's advised that if you have a minstrel, you go yellow. If you have a captain, you go red. This way you can do pre-buffs before starting phase 2. You just need to be careful that you don't kill the Darklings too fast, make sure everyone lives. You go through these tunnels, you kill these adds. When you kill the last ad, the mini can now do anthems. The red cap, he can throw a banner, do his capy buffs real quick. Then switch back to your other lines, and then you can start phase 2. Phase 2 is pretty much the same as phase 1. You enter this room, you will get a biting in front of you, and a bunch of other tentacles will spawn during the fight. 
As you can see here, you still have the biting tentacle that you kill. This too is a bit simpler because you don't have to kill the spewing tentacle. Keep it interrupted. So phase two is simply just nuking this biting tentacle really fast. And if your DPS is on par, it should be done within one minute, 30 seconds or up to two minutes. So in this phase, the burglar can actually go red line to increase your DPS a bit. As you can see, there's also another tentacle, a new tentacle in this phase. It's a spitting tentacle. You still have your spewing tentacles and your grasping. In this phase, you also get spitting tentacles. They kind of act the same as the spewing, like when they spawn, they get an induction. And someone in the group will be their target, will get a yellow eye above their head. They do a 5 second induction. If it's not interrupted, they will spit a puddle at that person, which will drop a puddle underneath them. So this spitting, you can either interrupt, or you can just move out of the group and drop the puddle way to the side. That's up to the group what they feel is the best strategy. So going more into detail, the tank will of course be standing in melee range of the biting. The tank will once again interrupt spewing on the right when it inducts. But we're not killing the spewing this time, so DPS can pretty much just stand with the tank in front here and just nuke the biting. If the tank tanks the biting a bit like to the right side, the DPS can stand on the left side and get positional damage on the biting. So they'll be hitting it from behind. We'll increase the damage a bit. For this phase, the LM will stand with the group, the healer will stand with the group. Everyone will be pretty much camped together at this point. When it comes to interrupts and CC, as I said, the tank will interrupt the spewing on the right. The tank will also try to interrupt the spitting on the right when it spawns. The lore master will interrupt the spewing on the far left. That's the only job for the lore master. Debuff the biting as much as you can to kill it really fast. And keep an eye on the spewing. Interrupt the induction when it goes off. The berg will be in red line. Berg will stay on the biting, help DPS. One thing the Berg can do is when the Grasping spawns, you can just use one riddle on the Grasping to keep it locked down for a bit and just go back to nuke nuke nuke. The only other thing the Berg can do is help interrupt the spitting when it spawns on the left and the spewing when it spawns on the left. These three tentacles should only need one interrupt each, but should be done before they can get their second interrupt off. So the mini or cappy heals, whatever you have, can also help interrupt these close left. But like I said, the fight should be done within 1 minute 30 seconds to 2 minutes. And once you kill the biting, the grasping maw will once again go underwater and you can now move to the exit for the next part. And as you can see from this video, we spent 1 minute 45 seconds killing it, so we didn't have a lot of problems. After you kill it, you go to the next part, which is another little room with ads. You now meet the third ad type in this instance, the Corrupting Void Eater. This guy has an induction, it needs to be interrupted or he'll do a big damage hit. Other than that, he will sometimes start raising his arms in like a motion. And if it's not interrupted with a CJ, it's gonna do a big damage hit. But if you keep this guy interrupted and CJ'd, he shouldn't be a problem. And in this fight, there's also a bunch of Darklings and Dark Maws. Just like the first ad phase, you just kill all the ads. Once the ads are dead, you can now move on. And just like before, I advise the Minstrel to go yellow here, the Captain to switch to red line, just to get those pre buffs before the fight. Once again, there's a tunnel with some ads clear out the ads, but I would advise to let the woman kill this final Darkling while the group goes in and positions himself. At the moment the woman kills the Darkling, I would start doing all the mini buffs, the cappy buffs before you switch over. 
because she will kill this Darkling. Once the Darkling is dead, she will start walking. When she reaches the room with the boss, she will start speaking. Once she starts speaking, you only have like two seconds before the fight starts, which leads us to phase three and the final part of the instance. And this leads us to phase three, which is the final boss of the instance. Once you finish this, you're done with the instance. As you can see, this is the entrance, and you have this land on the left side you can walk on. It goes all the way back here, and over here is the exit. If I turn a little, you can see the rest of the arena. The main boss is going to be spawning in the middle here, and you have these rocks you can stand on. The water is, as before, poisonous if you stand in it. And as you can see, this is an overhead view of the arena. This is the entrance where I was standing in the clip. The water you saw, and there's land all the way on the left, all the way to the exit. Now I'm going to go through every mechanic in the fight without being class specific yet. In the middle, the main boss, the Grasping Maw, will spawn. Right away as the fight starts, you kill the Grasping Maw, the fight is done, it's over, you win. In the water, there's a couple of rocks you can stand on. It's safe for damage. If you're melee DPS, if you're a tank, you'll normally be standing on one of these rocks. But you can also stand on the land right here. You can still hit the boss. So if you're standing on this little thing here, you can still hit the boss. At one minute, two adds will spawn. Draining Dark Maw, that we've seen before. One will spawn in the middle, one will spawn by the entrance. The strategy with the main group that I explained is to keep these guys locked down with messing. But it's also possible to just kill them. At two minutes, another draining dark maw will spawn at the exit, along with the corrupting void eater, the big guy that we saw before. Again, the strategy is to mess the dark maw, make sure to interrupt the void eater, and the tank will just pull from range the void eater to him. Another mechanic is you get 10 Darkling adds. They spawn over 2 minutes 30 seconds every 30 seconds. And on the right here you can see their spawn times and locations. So at 30 seconds there will spawn 2 Darklings in the middle here. 1 minute there will spawn 1 Darkling here by the entrance, 1 by the exit. 1.5 minutes, 2 in the middle. At 2 minutes and 2.30, they will spawn an additional 2 by the entrance. And the tank will pick up all of these and just tank them alongside with the boss and the Void Eater. The final and probably the most difficult mechanic to manage is the puddles that drop on every member of the Fellowship. At 1 minute, you will drop a puddle. Every single member in the Fellowship will drop a puddle. And then after that, every... 1 minute to 1 minute 10 seconds, you will keep dropping puddles. Once you drop the puddle, you take an initial hit, as well as damage over time if you stand in the puddles. So the strategy is going to be to drop the puddles on the sides, this side, this side, and on the rocks systematically. Keep the middle part clean for the later part of the fight. I'm now going to look at each class specifically. And what their job is. The tank, of course, will tank the main boss, and usually we have the tank start at this rock, tanking the boss like this. And the other jobs of the tank will be to pull every darkling that spawns, keep the darklings on you so they don't go kill the healer, and also to tank the void eater. So for puddle dropping for the tank, you will tank right here until you drop a puddle, at which point you move to the next rock. And at like 2 minutes plus, you will drop the next puddle. You can move to the next rock. And if you happen to get to over 3 minutes, you drop a puddle on this rock. You can now move to this land, which is safe. And for any more puddles, I would suggest just jumping to these rocks. Dropping them here or in this rock. And then just moving back, fighting on this land, piece of land here. Other than that, your job as a tank 
to keep aggro of all the adds so they don't kill any other stuff. Tank the Void Eater and tank the main boss and focus on staying alive. Now for the healing roll. Your healer, a good position to be here, is here in the middle. One mechanic that I forgot to mention was the Grasping Maw will put an unpotable bleed on everyone around 15 seconds. She'll tear up during the fight, so a lot of AoE heals are needed in this fight. The healer should normally stay in the middle within this area because your DPSers will be over here, your lore master will be close, the Berg will normally be here and on over this side. Make sure you're within range to heal everyone. Your job in this fight is simply to heal, 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 keep everyone alive, keep your tank alive, keep the DPS alive. When the adds spawn, they will normally go for you. Try to call out for the tank to pull them off you. Try to avoid those darklings as much as you can until the tank is able to pick them up. Now for puddle dropping at one minute, the main strat is for the healer and the lore master to drop their first puddle close to the shore, as close to the exit as possible, so in this area. Once you drop the puddle, again move towards the middle, keep doing what you're doing, heal everyone, keep people alive. For the next puddle, you will now go back to this area, as close to this puddle as possible, and you will drop with the lore master once again, over here. Just keep doing this, keep dropping close to the edge, until you get close to the middle. If the fight lasts as long that all of this area will be filled up with puddles, the next puddle should be dropped in the back, close to the wall in the back, in order to keep this area clean. Now over to the DPS, which in this case is the RK and the Hunter. For the DPS, the puddle dropping is going to be like the Mini and the Lore Master, near the entrance, but not close to the edge, instead close to the back wall. As far as you can, back to the entrance, you drop your first puddle. Second puddle, you drop as close to it as possible, and then you just keep dropping it at the back wall, all the way over here to the middle. Other than that, as a DPS, your only job is to kill this Grasping Maw as quick as possible. The faster it dies, the easier the fight will be. A good starting position for the DPS will be over on this side. DPS can stay close to the entrance, since you're gonna drop puddles here anyways. And you can still hit the boss from here with your ranged. So as a damage dealer in this fight, your job is pretty straightforward. Now for the Lord Master, in this fight you have mainly three things to worry about. Debuffing the boss as much as you can. Keeping this first Dark Maw by the entrance masked. And dropping puddles. Like I showed with the mini, the LM should drop puddles with the mini close to the edge of the water, near the entrance, and then just keep dropping them as the fight goes on. When it comes to positioning for LM, you can either start here, it's a good spot for LM, on this rock in the beginning is pretty good, but eventually you'll be moving to this part anyways. Now as an LM, for the first minute, you can focus on debuffing as much as possible, and when debuffing, you want to have Benediction on full time, all the way from the beginning. And you should also prioritize the Spirit pet over any other pets, so the DPS can get some extra heals from it. Because there's a lot of bleed damage in this fight. So having the Spirit pet up full time will really help in this fight. Other than that, your job as LM, like I said, mess this 1 minute Dark Maw by the entrance. Keep him locked down. Drop puddles by the edge with the Minestrel, or Blue Cappy, and debuff the boss. The boss dies faster. You should also try to keep lures on any adds that the tank is tanking, so he takes less damage. But your main priority should be debuffing the boss. And finally, getting to the Berg. The Berg should be in yellow line for this strategy. The burglar's position should be here, so you can hit the boss from behind. It's a good idea to use double disable in the beginning with Adl. It decreases the damage of the dot that the Grasping Maw will put on everyone. So once you see the dot being applied, 
at around 15 seconds, you switch to double enrage. But until the bleed is put on everyone, you want to keep double disable to decrease the damage of that one. And as a Berg, of course, you try to help and do as much damage as you can on the boss. Keep all your debuffs on, double enrage, quite a snag. And for a Berg, the puddle dropping is going to be opposite of the other ones. Berg should drop by the exit over here. Next one, closer, closer, like this. And since the Berg is the only one over here, should have a lot of space to drop puddles. You'll be pretty confident about that puddle dropping. The other jobs of a Berg is to mess this Dark Maw in the middle at one minute. Keep him locked down with your riddle. Make sure he's locked down. Except for that, you're on the boss with debuffs and DPS. You're dropping puddles like everyone else. But also at two minutes, there's another Dark Maw. You should mess and keep locked down. And there's a Void Eater you need to interrupt, and the tank will pick up the Void Eater. And after the two minute mark, you have quite a lot to do. So make sure that this guy is messed with your riddle. And you can either use your reset and riddle this guy. But probably even better is to use the provoke mess. Use hips and provoke this guy and keep him locked down with provoke and this guy with riddle. So after two minutes, your concerns will be locking down the middle dark maw, locking down the second dark maw, interrupt this guy, just the first interrupt, after that the tank will take care of the interrupt, he will pull him, help CJ, the void eater, if needed, but still, of course, keep nuking the boss with everything you have, and be aware of dropping puddles. There's a lot of stuff going on in this fight, but once you get practice and get used to the fight, it gets better every time. If everybody drops puddles well, then this fight should be pretty smooth if you have a good group. Of course, you need to be geared for this as you take a lot of damage. Your healer needs to be good, your DPS needs to be strong, tanks, everyone needs to be strong and know their jobs, know their roles. But if you have a good group doing this strat flawlessly, then the fight should be done within 3-5 to five minutes. There are of course other strategies which involve nuking with 3 DPS. And kill it under 2 minutes. But in this video I showed you the safe approach. Once you kill the Grasping Maw, the fight will be over. You can get the loot, maybe get the best runes if you're lucky. If you want to watch more footage of the fights, then on my channel I upload pretty much every class I do it on. I upload the fights on my channel. You can watch and see how we do it with dropping puddles, locking down ads. Of course, it's not always flawless, but you get the idea, which I explain here. And hopefully this guide will help more people finishing the fight, be more successful in this run. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, join my Discord, and I will see you in the next one.